We spoke in the last class about Mara Heter, and as I said, she's a really wicked woman. She should be given Aramis' space, and if I was in control, I would um, I would take her off planet Earth. But Hashem is much smarter than me, and he's told us the Eitzhara is Tov Mod, and the Eitzhara is, the Eitzhara needs Mara Heter. Without Mara Heter, so the Eitzhara would have no hope, because no one would listen to his stupid arguments. I just want to give you a few practical examples Mora Heter, as we said, she is the most popular and successful teacher in the entire planet. Right? She is the Rebetzin, as it were, par excellence of every single person in the world. And as we said, when it comes to stealing, that's a very, very sore point. I once went shopping and I left my groceries in the shul to use the restroom for a minute. I came out and somebody was helping himself to my groceries. And I said, excuse me, that's my uh, that's my, my groceries. He said, oh, I thought it was public property. I thought it was public property. And I said, wow, what a great example of Marhetra. I didn't tell him that. Right? I just uh, apologized that it was mine. But right, how many of us come to this Nisoyen on a constant basis right, to think that something is really um, public property right, when it's really not? To think that something is not stealing. Right? And we'll think another common um, example of this is something which is not expensive. Yeah? A person is on the workplace. And in the workplace, you have paper clips, you have rubber bands. Yeah? Right? How much does a paper clip cost? Five cents here in Israel, 10 agro. It's not so expensive. So you take a paper clip. Yeah? Um, right? Okay, but they add up. Right, the Gemara Yishalmi has a whole discussion. Are you allowed to take a toothpick from a fence? So there's one opinion. That you are allowed to take a toothpick from a fence, right? Take a piece of wood off the fence because the um, it's not worth even a sharp tooth. There's nothing. There's no butter. But the counter argument is that if everybody comes along and takes a toothpick from the fence, then there's no more fence left, yeah? Then you have to buy a new fence. Right? It's the same thing with the, with the paper clips. If you have a company of a thousand people and every day one person is taking home a paperclip, then it's going to end up with a lot of money, and people are mock fit on that. Another common example of Mara Heter, where she's very, very successful, and is a simcha, right? And I only came to this recognition of how serious a transgression is this when I made a bris for my son. And they gave me the bill for the bris, and each piece of cake was like a dollar or 75 cents. You know, and each little piece of cake, that's how they make their money. Right? People come along, and they're very generous. They're thinking about their spouse. Right? The Gemara says that Rav was at a simcha. He would wrap up a piece of cake, take it home for his wife, even though she had some slight um, psychological uh, conditions. So what is uh, so bad? Yeah. So the problem is that if you take for your wife, that's fine. Right. But you know, assuming that you're not taking extra, right? I spoke to Rav Ploy Zatzal and Rav Yashiv, Rav Yitzhak Berkowitz, and many other posts, and they said, you're only allowed to take from a simple you would eat. But you can't really take more, right? You can be a on portion and take for your spouse, right? But you certainly can't take for your 10 kids and for your, you know, and for your nieces and nephews, right? Take a whole, you know, thing. Unless, of course, the Baal Simcha gives permission. But often, you can't really ask permission because... They'll, out of embarrassment, they'll say yes, right? And in the end of the day, they're going to get a very expensive bill, right? But Marahetha tells you, what do you mean? It's a mitzvah, right? To, to make your family happy and to give them cake and, and to share the simple with other people. Right? This is a very difficult question you have to know because uh, it could be that if it's, it's family and they're going to have a lot of leftovers and they, depending on their financial situation. But again, these types of situations, especially when it comes to, to money, right? We have to be very, very careful about more ahead to, right? Especially in the job uh, arena, right? There's a big more ahead to, to um, use work time for things other than uh, work, right? The Ramam tells us, Yaakov Avinu, he was careful about every single second and every single pruta, right? The Torah is made. The Torah testifies that Yaakov Avinu, even one sheep which was taken through um Trefa through uh, 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 some an animal would come and grab it. Yaakov even would take his own responsibility. And on work time, he was very 
uh, careful to use every single second of his work time. The Ram, in fact, Paschal and Shulchan Aruch says, a person during work time is an evit. His time is bought by his master. Now, the Aruch HaShulchan says already there are certain leniencies, right? Um, to dab and to pray, to say bench, right? It used to be that a person didn't even wasn't even able to daven right on the work time, not to bench, to say uh, maybe a Pirkus and Muslim Sara. But today, a leniency is given, but it's to an extent. Yeah, I remember once my wife had to hire a certain person to help her. Right, she would come and daven one hour shmon esrei. Right, and then she would bench for twenty minutes. Right, okay, it's beautiful, but not on someone else's time. When they're, expe- when they're paying you. All these things come from our head to, right? And she seems like such a wonderful lady. She's telling you, no, daven for an hour, right? Think of Kavanah Sarizal, about Yehudim, about bringing the Shefa of Kedusha down to this world. But in truth, right, it's a load of garbage. It's really an Avera and it's Gezel and Isra Hamar. And this is the power that Mara had to has. She's such a brilliant teacher. She knows how to teach us to do the wrong thing, right? Or as um, uh, Rav uh, Hagon Hatzadik, Rav, uh, Rav Naftali uh, Kaplan says, it's all the right things for the wrong reasons, right? She tells us to do the right things. Of course, you should dive with the Kabbalah. Of course, you should bench properly, right? Just not in this particular scenario. You have to be a little bit more zerz because it involves an iser of Gezel. And this is actually the Vilna Gon says in Mishle. Right, the beginning of Mishlei, not actually in the beginning, in Parik Zayin, Pasuk Yudalit, right? Zivchei Shlomim Malai, the Gon says that the biggest simcha is bringing Korban Shlom, right? You're supposed to eat a besimcha, and it's a tremendous joy, right? He says that's where the Yetzar comes. The Yetzar does not come when you're doing, to get a person doing do an Avera, right? Because it just won't work, right? If you tell a person on Shabbos, just why don't you go get in a car and just drive, take a drive. No one will listen, right? Says the Vilna Gon, the Yetzar always tries to get a person to do a mitzvah, right? And that's what the Gra says. That when a person's bringing Zivchei Shlamim, it's a tremendous mitzvah. He has Zivchei Shlamim lie, and you're supposed to eat the simcha. The, the, the Yetzar says, do it with a little bit of taiva, right? And um, the Yetzar is, um, you know, call it the wife, right? The, the wife of the Yetzar is Morhetar. Because Morhetar says, you know, of course, you're doing a mitzvah. Just enjoy a little bit. You know what's made man, and you know, just have a little bit of taiva there. Right? This is the way that Mara had to works. Right? And what's the difference between taiva and between simcha? Right? So the Noam Elimelech reveals to us a beautiful idea. He says that if you're thinking about, Hashem, if you eat and think how kind Hashem is that He's given us this wonderful food, that's simcha. If you're thinking when you're eating about my stomach and how much pleasure I'm getting in my stomach from this food, then that's taiva. It's a very small amount. All it is is one thought in your head, right? If you're thinking about a Kaddish Baruch Hu, that's simcha. If you're thinking about your stomach, that's taiva. Who pushes us to think about our stomach and not about Hashem? That's Marahetar. Right? Marahetar. So, once again, we have to be so careful when it comes to this because she's such a good teacher. She actually received a doctorate in education from Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and every Ivy League, Ivy League college in the world, Oxford, Cambridge. Right? She's the most brilliant um, uh, pedagogue on planet Earth. Right? She has brilliant, brilliant, brilliance. Right? And Hashem gave her that brilliance um, in order that we should overcome the arguments and be able to... Um, and be able to... Uh, grow in our borders of Shem. And it is, in fact, an impossible challenge. The Gemara says in Kedushim, Aflamid, that uh, it's impossible to fight the Eitzhara. Just if you have Siyat Shmaya, then it's a nace, it's a miracle. You can overcome it, Siyat Shmaya. So Hashem should give us that Siyat Shmaya to overcome our Heter and the Eitzhara and all the other challenges that we have. And we should be Zeichet to serve Hashem every single day. Amen. Okay, dear, what's up?